Let us show you how to use the Tools and Business Center to add a new AT&T Virtual Private Network Service Location and Transport Circuit. This capability is not supported for customers using AT&T Managed Premises Equipment. Placing the order online can take as few as 5 to 10 minutes. First, we'll go to our inventory. From the top menu, select Manage, then Network, and then View All Inventory. This brings us to the Network Inventory page, which shows our network inventory. We'll click Add Location at the top right. We're going to do a single order. Next, under AT&T Virtual Private Network Service, we'll click Add This Service. The AT&T VPN page appears. From there, we'll choose Self-Managed, also known as Transport, and then Ethernet for the protocol. You'll need a quote ID from your account representative. We have one handy, so we'll paste it in. Click Search to see the details of the quote ID. Make sure those details are correct, and then click Continue. The next page shows the address. Click Continue. In the next pop-up, we'll provide additional service locator and building information. From the drop-down lists, select the correct Master Customer Number, or MCN, and select the GRC and SOC. If you are unsure, reach out to your account representative for assistance. The MCN is verified by the system. Next, choose the company name from the drop-down list. Note that our selection starts with a T, indicating a transport circuit. Now, we'll add additional address information like building, floor, and room number. In our example, this is an officially numbered address. Finally, we'll select No, indicating that this location isn't under construction, and then click Save. The next step asks for your contact preference. Select your preference, and then click Save. A success message appears. Click OK to automatically move to the next step. Next, you'll need to provide four contacts, a local contact, an additional contact, a billing contact, and a technical contact. The local and additional contacts should be people who can access the site and speak on your behalf if needed. The technical and billing contacts should be experts in those respective subjects for the site. The local and additional contacts can't be the same. After entering information for each contact, click Save. After you get a success message, click OK. Next, the Configure Access page appears. For an Ethernet protocol, all the values default to what was provided by the quote ID. Now click Save, and the success message appears again. Click OK. Next, you'll configure your port on the Configure Port page. For port billing options, choose Fixed Rate or High Cap Flex. We'll select Fixed Rate. Next, choose your class of service. We'll choose Multimedia High. That will allow more profile options for our class of service. Before selecting a turnup protocol, contact your network administrator to make sure that you have the right turnup protocol. We'll select Null in this example. For IP version, dual stack is very common in today's environment. If you're unsure, verify this with your network administrator. VLAN tag control is another setting that you'll want to verify with your network administrator. Single tag is the most common selection, and that's the one we'll select. To continue, click Save. When you see the success message, click OK. The final step is adding the VLAN. You'll need to have at least one VLAN on the circuit. You can add multiple VLANs if you want. Click Add VLAN at the lower left. Next, under Virtual Private Network, select your VPN. In the search box, you can start typing to see a filtered list of VPNs. Next, select your IP version. We'll select Dual Stack for this example. Next, enter the IP address for the IPv4 customer edge, as well as the provider edge IP address and subnet mask. We'll enter an autonomous system number, or ASN. Under WAN routing, we'll select BGP4. You can choose static routing if you want. Under IPv6, notice that AT&T can provide the IPv6 addresses. To enter your own IPv6 addresses, clear this checkbox. Note that the ASN for IPv6 must be the same as IPv4. After you're done entering IP information, click Continue. Next, we'll select the class of service. You can choose 4COS or 6COS. We'll select 6COS in this example. You can search for a specific profile. 
You can also search for a distribution, or you can select a COS distribution from the drop-down list. We'll enter profile 24000, and all the information is filled in. The ingress and egress default to the same class of service, but you can make them different if you want. After you're done with the class of service section, click Continue. Next, we'll put in the VLAN speed. We'll enter 10 megabits per second and click Next. On the next page, Order Review, you can review your entire order. To edit any part of the order, click a blue pencil and make your changes. Scrolling to the bottom, we find the terms and conditions. When you've read and agree to the terms and conditions, check the box and click Confirm. We're almost done. Now we'll schedule our order. We'll select the date that we want this order to be fulfilled and then click Continue. It may take some time for the order details to be saved. You'll see a spinner while your order is being saved. When your order has been saved, you'll see a confirmation message. You'll also get an email confirmation that will show your order ID. Make sure to keep that email. You'll need that order ID later. Check the Business Center help pages for more videos, step-by-step -step help, and a list of available transport change orders for AT&T Virtual Private Network Service.